Come and say one thing, don't see if you understand. Hey y'all, it's me, it's your girl Morgan Alexis, and we're back. We're back again, baby! And so here on this channel, we talk locks, health and wellness, and black liberation. And if any of those things resonate, go ahead and click subscribe. But if you are not new here, you already knew all of that. So we're just going to get right into today's video. So today's video is uh, kind of an extension, or it is an extension of my last upload. So if you didn't watch that one, go watch that one and then come back thank you okay so now that you're back so the work that i do with people online from anywhere any space is work with them on an individual basis so individual work individual self-healing helps the community helps the collective heal um but the modalities um and the the theories in which i utilize in the spaces that i'm in are very much from an African-centered, an African Black psychology-centered. Uh, so the work that I do is very informed by the idea that we um, are multidimensional beings. And so with that, we need multidimensional healing. And a little bit of what I was talking about in that first video is westernized psychology or westernized medicine will not acknowledge that because they compartmentalize healing we have to understand that we are connected beings so when we're talking about let's say eye health we also have to talk about lifestyle now, what i am so passionate about is black people african people that is my concern uh, indigenous folk latinx people now when we're talking about black people african people of the diaspora um we talk about culture and if we know a little bit or a lot of bit about the ma'afa or the the african holocaust a lot of our culture due to the forced enslavement of african people and then the disbursement of african people in this world has been forgotten a lot of pain and suffering has happened and due to that trauma a lot of a lot of cultural norms and things of that nature have been forgotten due to that process i'm sure that's a known thing but due to the spirit of african people now because spirit cannot be destroyed a lot of us have survived right so we can see it very evidently in black culture and culture is the way we survive, right? So the way we speak, the way we dress, our drama, arts, food, religion, beliefs, that is culture, that is the way we survive. And a lot of African culture has survived even through that horrendous, disgusting process that the powers that be have put African people through. Are you following me? Ebonics, right? African tongue is surviving through that very system. Like, ain't finna. African tongue has survived through the assimilation or forced, the forced assimilation of in the English language. The, the way we dress is also very evident. Our swag and our vibe is totally different, very evident that that is not of the dominant culture. It is African culture that allows that to shine through even through you get what i'm saying so even through the assimilation of another culture african spirit has survived very evidently and i won't go through all the examples but those are just some so here's here's where i come in i guess i could say <laughs> so the way we have survived is beautiful but the also but also it has been demonized because even through that process, right? Even through the ma'afa, how there was an evident, um, purposeful and intentional uh, raping of African culture because the purpose was to make us forget. It's still very evident. But while we are here, 
we it, those things are very much demonized because it's still that effort and that intentionality to make us forget so the reason why we think so negatively or some of us think so negatively of ebonics is that very that very intention of dominant culture to make us forget who we are because that is evidence of us remembering ebonics is the evidence of african people and spirit surviving even under those conditions and even under the conditions in which we live in now so the intentionality is still alive and well i won't go into because i probably will start crying but i won't go into the actual death of african people because then i mean that's the very much that is very evident intentionality right so when we talk about police force and all of that stuff okay so i hope we're on the same page here but as you can see you cannot kill the african spirit the essence of african people that is you cannot destroy that that is what survives in all of us that is what collectively connects us to one another that is our survival which is spirit and so when we talk about this healing that we need on a collect the collective healing that black people require it is not what it looks like for the dominant culture you get what i'm saying it doesn't it doesn't work like that because that's not how we function we don't function as half of a being we when we work on one part of ourselves we're working on all of ourselves the way we self-preserve is through the healing modalities that resonate to us at a spiritual level at a cellular level the reverberation the vibration of african people happens through culturally aligning with the healing modalities that culturally align you get does that make sense now we're gonna get a little down to what the purpose of getting in touch with returning back to ourselves so the the, the power and the spirit of sankofa that is my true intention in the holistic space and it is to not to find ourselves i don't think we're lost people we are not lost <laughs> um and even on an individual level i think a lot of a lot of us navigate this world as i feel lost and the thing is we are not lost you you don't lack anything right so like to to lose something means it's gone like you have to go and look for it um, outside of you like it's an external thing and I'll have to go explore and find it and that's what Sankofa in Sankofa will tell us that we're not lost people it's just to remember so to go back and get and the way to do that is through community um, and remembering and if you can't remember on your own get back into community to remember the messaging is forget the past and keep moving or pull yourself up by your bootstraps and and keep moving and that does not apply that does not apply to us you are to remember you are to remember your true authentic african self okay and so with that i am very passionate about nutrition so that is why i have gone to go get more information about nutrition at an integrative level now just being very observant of how even nutrition is a way that we have been forcibly assimilated here in this part of the world the way nutrition is affecting black people is very evident about that intentionality but when we talk about physical violence we can talk about physical violence at the nutritional level the food here in the United States is so toxic to black people 
that is where I understand we need a lot of help. It's one thing to say, just start eating more organic or more plants. But it's also one thing to know that the chemicals in our food make us addicted and it's it's changing our makeup at the genetic and cellular level. That's when we have to start doing this reversal work through the foods that we are eating. If we're continually if we're continuously eating the toxic foods that are available to us, we will continuously ex our cells and our body and the way our our body continues to communicate with itself will continue to house these diseases that are very evident towards the foods that we're eating that aren't they are not for us when we go back to who to remembering who we are so if you look back into some traditional ways of eating um, just on the continent it's more plant-based eating the amount of sugar and the amount of processed foods and the amount of meat that we eat here is not in alignment to how we would eat naturally and that's where my passion is coming i have experimented with the vegan lifestyle and that is still very much infiltrated by the processed foods and all of these things and the chemicals and the toxins when you have access to whole foods that are life-giving right and i'm not saying we don't eat meat i'm saying we don't eat toxins our body does not know what to do with a bag of potato chips but now that it's introduced to us it's difficult to get away from the addictive chemicals that they have put in those foods to continuously bring us back to eating these chips there's so many people that I speak to and they're like, I would love to be plant-based or I would love to go vegan, but they feel as though to their core, they cannot because of the addictive nature of these foods. And I'm just like, well, how do I sit here and tell people stop eating them? Because it's very difficult for me to stop eating them. But now I know what the requirement is. And it is the very same idea of returning back to who we are through the foods that we are eating. It is not a matter of taking away. It is not a matter of taking out, right? It's not a matter of stopping those things. Because if, you're, if you know, if you see Ebonics, it wasn't a matter of taking out English language because if if that was the case then we would not be we would be speaking a whole different tongue we would be speaking African tongue here in the United States it's not a matter of me right as a health coach sitting in front of you and saying you know stop eating them because if it was that easy I'm pretty sure a lot of us would do that and so what I have found is that it is not that it is a matter of flooding our bodies with the things that are naturally recognizable by our bodies to our core that it will start to readjust its palate and its cravings to those things that you are giving to it in abundance so flooding the body with the nutrients and flooding the body with the minerals that we need in order to live vital and optimal lives. Because it's very, it's very hard to take something out that is creating addiction. They have shown this brain activity of somebody who's addicted to heroin and somebody who is addicted to sugar and they've put those two images to side by side and they have shown that the brain activity is very much the same. But there's a way around it. When we flood our bodies with whole food nutrition, and we can re-alkalize the body. So moving it from an 
acidic state where it's unrecognizable to the body and it's creating pain and it's creating dis-ease, then moving it to an alkaline state, meaning it's back in balance, it has reached homeostasis, and it is fully vital for the functioning of the individual. That is true healing and going back to remember how we function as black people. We don't operate in an acidic state. Your body's telling you that due to the swelling, due to the, the inflammation, due to the headaches, due to the brain fog. So now here's a little shameless plug. I am offering a program that intertwines the very two things returning back to ourselves through detoxification and nourishment of the physical body but also the mental body are our, our, that multi-dimensional healing because what is happening on the physical plane is also happening on an energetic emotional plane you cannot separate the two you have to do the work and as a whole being so I am offering a program and the foods that I will be using to help aid me in guiding you all or clients, those of you who find that this is something that you want and need, moving you from a state of being unrecognizable to yourself through the foods that you're eating, the way that you're speaking to yourself, the limiting beliefs that you may have against yourself or the way that your body may be attacking you and you want it to start recognizing your host again. So the program that I'm offering is very much grounded in everything that I just spoke about. So not only will we be using whole food nutrition that will provide nutrition at the cellular level we will also be using the very psychological standpoint that says we are whole beings. So when we're doing the work on in the physical, we also have to do the work in the emotional and energetic level. We will do guided imagery, we will do visualization, we will do meditation, but the idea is to return back to ourselves. So if you are interested, and would like to have a consultation with me to see if this program aligns with you i would love for you to dm me on instagram so my instagram link will be below in the description box just dm me the word return and i will reach out to you we will set up a consultation and we'll go from there um i'll be putting people on a wait list because the program has not launched just yet so I hope that this video was clear as to why I quit being a therapist. So the first part of this video, part one, and why I'm so excited about what I do present day and what I will be continuing to do. So um, that's the end of this video. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in my next one. Peace.